What is going on then guys and welcome to a new video. So today then I've got another kind of like one-to-one -one chat I want to have with you guys. Um, I've got some points that I'm going to go through on my phone. Last time I did a video kind of in this style, you guys seem to enjoy it. So I thought I'd do another one. So today's topic then is the drawbacks of working for yourself or the drawbacks of being an entrepreneur. Um, I feel like that, especially when I was kind of working a nine to five and wanted to work for myself, that I not for one minute did I take a step back and think, if I was to work for myself, then would there be any drawbacks? Like, I didn't think that for one second. And I want you guys to, ultimately, you're trying to build a Shopify dropshipping store, probably if you're watching this channel, and probably as well to make enough money as well so you can work for yourself. So I want you guys to, when you achieve that, fully know exactly what to expect then just so you don't make the same mistakes that I do and you don't get caught up in the same problems that I got caught up as well. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about but before getting to the video um, I just wanted to make a quick shout out really. I've been thinking about making this video for quite a long time and then I saw a fellow YouTuber called Braden Wurch do a similar video on this topic and he told me to do a video on this so that's why I'm doing it and I've been watching him for quite a while actually and he gives really just kind of no BS down to earth advice so I feel like we kind of deliver content in the same similar way so if you like the kind of stuff I do then I thoroughly recommend you go and check him out um, he puts out good content every single week really consistent as well so make sure you go check him out his name's Braden Wurch and that being said then back to the topic of the video and point number one then, so when you come to work for yourself, I mean, when you have a job, there's no such thing as guaranteed income, but when you work for yourself, then it's even less guaranteed. So so I wanna make this video then relevant to those people who will ultimately become drop shippers as a full-time income and kind of link the drawbacks to what those are if you're doing that full-time. So when I talk about no guaranteed income then, if you're say, for instance, well, the mistake I made then was that I quit my job as soon as I had one product going really well, and that one product was a seasonal product, and for whatever reason then, it just didn't occur to me, it just didn't strike me to think, hang on a second, this is an LED dog collar, and soon it's gonna, not gonna be starting getting dark until like 10 o'clock at night, and nobody's gonna need an LED dog collar. That just didn't occur to me for, for whatever reason and sales then inevitably inevitably started to drop off and at the time it still just didn't occur to me and for whatever reason I just kind of got too wrapped up in the moment I became too naive and at, it was really at those times when I kind of learned what it meant to run a business and pretty much survive on yourself. So when I talk about no guaranteed income then when it comes to Shopify dropshipping there's so many different variables um, for anybody who's spent money consistently with Facebook ads will tell you that just because you're making money in week one, it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to make money in week two. And whether that's because of your products, because of the ads you're running, it could be a whole multitude of different reasons. So just don't ever expect things to be easy because I saw a meme the other day. In fact, I think I put it on my Instagram of if something comes easy, then it's not worth having. So it might be all very well and good making money initially in those first few months like I did. Like things took off pretty quickly for me when it comes to drop shipping. And that's one of the beauties of drop shipping. But it's not always going to last. So make sure that if you do take that massive leap of actually quitting your job and doing this full time, make sure you've got at least six months living expenses in your bank account so when you do have a slow month it's going to be inevitable even a slow quarter maybe even a slow year that you've at least got some money some savings in the account just to kind of see you through because it got so bad for me at one point i hate to admit it that i did actually consider getting a job again just to kind of see me through the low periods um but i didn't and i'm glad i didn't because you never know what's gonna to happen till it happens. So I might have got a job and just kept that job. But the fact that I just saw this through and made do with what I had to and made sure I made it work, I kind of played that game with myself where I let things get so bad that it just kind of forced me to make things work. But it's a dangerous game to play because it won't always work. So what I'm trying to say then is just make sure you've got that buffer, that X amount of funds in your bank account, at least six months living expenses in your bank account, just as kind of like a, a buffer to fall back on if you need to. 
Point number two then is the social aspect. So this is, if there was anything I missed about my nine to five job, then this would be it. My social life has definitely declined since I started working for myself, just because I'm around less people. Like with a nine to five job, there was always the people in the office. Um, there would be kind of like social outgoings with people in the office and then through work, um, if I like, for example, then the people, the company I worked for, then I would sometimes go up to Manchester. Um, I was due to go on a trip to, I think it was Belgium where they manufactured the profit, the product. Um, and when I handed in my notice, they obviously took me off that trip. And I would have met more and more people through that. And you would think as well, like the more interesting your job is, then the easier it is to make friends. But it just doesn't really work like that. Like even now, when I talk to people about what I do, then they're just not interested at all. Like it's really hard to make a conversation about what I'm doing for work because people just, I guess it's probably because nobody knows what it is or nobody's really heard of it. So people find it difficult to talk about. So unless I'm talking about what someone else does, then they're not really interested in what I do. So my social life definitely has suffered just purely because I'm getting out of the house less often and I'm kind of meeting less people. So again, another thing to consider if you've been working at your workplace for a long time and you come to the point where you're going to quit your job just think how that's going to impact your social life and it's definitely something you've got to weigh up like if your social life is a massive part of your life and what makes you happy then that's a massive massive thing um, to ultimately be giving up so definitely something you should consider Point number three then is, in fact, my kind of, I want to, in fact, rather than just go through the drawbacks then I want to give you guys solutions. So number one then is no guaranteed income. Your solution is make sure you've got six months living expenses in your bank account. Number two, your social aspect. So ever since I quit my job, then I've made more of an effort to actually actively talk to people and kind of just be more interested in other people's lives um, and actually talk to people in the gym as well because that is something I've always done. I've always gone to the gym and I've kind of made it a thing to try and approach, not approach people in the gym, but that sounds weird, but like talk to people or maybe work in on someone's set and actually just be more sociable. Plus I'll go to like different classes. Like I've been trying to get fit this year. So going to spin class and meeting people through that. Um, I've been taking up martial arts as well. So again, meeting people through that. So your social life is going to suffer, but it doesn't have to permanently suffer. So you can do things to kind of replace the friends that you're going to lose when you quit your job. One is what I'm trying to say. Number three then. So outsourcing and what I mean by this then it kind of there's two sides to this so number one is when you're the hardest thing I in fact yeah the hardest thing then that I did was outsource the order processing because there's a lot of things that can go wrong in terms of sending the wrong products to the wrong person sending the wrong amount of products um, sending them to the wrong address but the right person and this was the hardest thing that I had to let go and actually trusting somebody to do something within your business when it's your name, your money, your reputation on the line. That was kind of like the hardest thing um, I could do. And I guess the only solution to that is, is make sure you go with somebody reputable. Try and find someone who comes with a recommendation from someone else. So for example, then you could message me and I could point you in the right direction. I'm not gonna give you the same person that does my stuff, but I could certainly point you in the right website or the right group of people to go about talking to. And kind of the other side of outsourcing then is that some things you just can't outsource and there's some things you will have to take care of. It's your business and ultimately when kind of like shit hits the fan, then it's gonna be your decision to make and nobody else's. Um, and if for whatever reason you can't perform your work, then your business is going to suffer and so is your income. So if you get sick, for instance, to the point where you can't work, then who's going to pick up kind of like the backlog of work or who's going to process those orders if you're not paying someone? Who's going to place the final orders? Who's going to deal with customer service? So these are all things you have to consider and plus holidays as well. So dropshipping is obviously awesome because we can run it anywhere in the world as long as we've got a computer and a wi-fi connection but do you want to always have to take your work on holiday with you do you, if you have a family one day or you might have a family now do you want to have to sacrifice time with them on holiday when you should be able to go away and fully relax um 
or do one have to take time away to to do those things that I just mentioned? And that kind of links back to that whole outsourcing things. Unless you outsource certain parts of your business, and these are always things that you're going to have to worry about. Um, and that kind of leads me on to my final point then, which is stress and anxiety. So I had never, ever, ever felt stress and anxiety like I had done probably in those kind of like first six to nine months of running my business when things started to get really tight especially money wise um, I would never up until that point I'd never gone to bed and not been able to sleep and just there were times where I li- I was literally so stressed out that I just couldn't sleep in bed and it's it's just an awful thing to have to go through and the only way you can kind of deal with it is is for it's always going to happen. There's always going to be certain things in your business that you can't control and it's part of the learning process that you're going to go through tough times and you've just got to find the best possible way to deal with it. And for me, it was the gym. So at that point, I was going to the gym a lot just because I found that after a good gym session and taking out all my stress and just kind of, for whatever reason, when I go to the gym, I can just switch off about work And that was always kind of like the best thing that I could do just to kind of forget about those stress and worries, clear my mind, and then just allow me to think a bit more clearly. But again, another thing you have to consider, if that's something you don't really deal, if you can't make decisions or you're not very good at making decisions and you don't really cope with stress very often, then that's something you're definitely going to have to consider quite seriously because when... For example, if it comes down to somebody who's placed a really big order and for whatever reason it hasn't showed up or perhaps Royal Mail are saying it has showed up. Not many people know this, by the way, but you can actually track e-packet via Royal Mail once it enters the UK. So if you have like a £300 order and it's a big deal to you and your business and Royal Mail is saying it's delivered but the customer saying it isn't, then how are you going to deal with that? That's your decision to make. So... They are kind of like my main four points. Um, If you're watching the video, then hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Hopefully you take something away from it. If you do, please do leave a like. And the final point I want to make then is that, and the last and final point then that I just want to quickly make before you guys go is that no matter what I've just said in this video, I'm not saying it's not worth it. 100% is worth it. Would I change the path that I took? No. Would there be certain things that I would do differently? 100% yes but it's been 100% worth it no matter how bad things have got at times. Um, I would definitely, definitely do it all over again. It's definitely worth it. The positives far outweigh the negatives for me. Um, I just felt like it wouldn't be right of me not to do this video and just make you guys fully aware and prepared of what is to come when you do reach that point of actually handing in your notice um, and quitting your job to do this full time. So that being said then guys, I'm wrapping the video up there. Um, If you're still watching, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop this video a like um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.